All right, all right. Good morning, guys. Um, we're going to be doing things a little bit different. I'm going to explain it. Um, as you guys know, I pretty much uh, the um, RBT's Relevant Bible Talk is pretty much non-existent. And um, unfortunately, uh, man, things have changed. Things have changed. The dynamics of just uh, pastoring a church of this size uh, but I'm just going to explain to you uh, what I think is a great solution and how we're going to make it happen. Because I, I don't want to not have devotionals, but at the same time, I need to be realistic. You know, so um, so basically, I was talking to my wife, and she's the one that has been encouraging me too. You know, but it, it's it's just nearly impossible to continue doing Monday through Friday um, full-blown RBT devotionals. And um, so I think this is going to, I hope this is going to make everybody happy. Um, so uh, what we've decided to do is um, shorten them up because a lot of the times the reason I don't do a devotional, many times you would have had devotionals if they were shorter, but I just don't have, you know, 45 minutes, 50 minutes um, to do a full-blown devotional. So unfortunately, a lot of times I'll have uh, less time, and I just opt out to just not do one at all. Um, as you guys know, I mean, we've been doing the prison ministry, and I pretty much do use that as a devotional for Thursday morning because I release it, uh, what, Wednesday, well, Thursday morning, 3 in the morning. Um, so this is what uh, we're going to do, is, um, is we're going to keep it shorter. I'm going to be doing devotionals once again. Uh, you'll have one uh, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday morning, you'll have the prison ministry devotional, which that is an hour, and then uh, Thursday and Friday. So I'll be doing four RBT devotionals, uh, 15 to 20 minutes, Monday through Friday, except Wednesday, because you get the one hour prison ministry devotionals. You guys know we've been um, putting a video out on the Edovo and Pando app uh, for the inmates, those that are incarcerated. We're getting letters, so many views. Um, it's just been a beautiful experience. Uh, and um, we just want to continue to keep that going. A lot of, I've had a, quite a few people tell me that they really enjoyed the prison ministry, even though they're watching it on YouTube, because it reminds them of, you know, the devotionals when me and Sharon uh, did them. So, um, so that's uh, hopefully that's good news to you. Um, so they will be 15 to 20 minutes. So um, we're going to get right to the Bible verse and right to the lesson right at the beginning of the RBT videos. And, um, and then, you know, with, with the prison ones, we are a little more loose because we have a full hour and we're able to kind of share our week. Because um, if, you, <clears throat> if you remember, those of you that are new maybe don't know, but when we do devotionals, we will take 10, 15 minutes talking about our day. And, uh, but uh, just not able to, guys. Uh, ever since we moved here roughly a year ago, 11 months ago, um, we didn't know what to expect. And uh, it's just been a blessing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because God has been truly opening doors wide open you know so um anyways um <clears throat> i want <clears throat> i want to talk about two things uh one of them is actually a current event it's on somebody that was recently baptized he was a he is a christian uh, i'm sorry he's a chicano rapper from uh southern california i don't know him never even heard his music um don't know anything about him i know that there was some beef going along with him and and some other uh, rappers in Southern California, and uh, I guess some people have said it, it's not an authentic baptism, or I mean, that's none of my business. Uh, matter of fact, it's nobody's business because that, that's between him and God. Uh, but I will say this, you know, is that uh, his name was Little Cuete, Little Cuete, and uh, I believe I got that right. Let me make sure, man, because I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, yeah, Little Cuete, and. Uh, my thing is this, when somebody makes a proclamation of Christ, it is a seed being planted. 
And even, even Sharon says many times that a lot of times we go to the church for the wrong reason and leave with the right. So regardless of his intentions, um, again, that's not for me to say. All I'm doing is when I saw that man get baptized on YouTube, I'm praying in the name of Jesus because the word of God does not come back void. So it doesn't matter to me what his intentions were. The fact is that when you get baptized in a way like that, and the church comes behind it and continues to pray and intercede that regardless of what was going on in his heart, we pray in the name of Jesus for it to be real, you know, and that's my prayer. Now, I have, I, 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 I've said it over and over many times over the years, but I'm going to re, re-say what I've said many times is that when I was in prison, the Lord gave me a vision of a huge army. And uh, he was going to raise up people who were incarcerated because of the state of the church. Now, I didn't understand that at that time because I couldn't wait to get out of prison so I can go to a quote unquote real church. I had no idea that much of the church was being compromised. Not every church. I've met some amazing, amazing churches and pastors. But at the same time, many have been compromised and watered down and diluted. And uh, God showed me in the dream that he was going to raise up an army. I wrote that dream down. I have to go through my boxes because I remember I sent it to my mom and my dad uh, because it was so vivid. But that God was going to raise up an army and a revival was going to start in prisons across the nation. Um, Obviously, at that time, and a lot of times God shows us something that doesn't happen right away. I didn't see it happen right away. Matter of fact, I've been out now for quite a bit of years now. What, 14 years I've been out? And um, I haven't really seen much. I've seen a handful come out of prison, but nothing lasting, nothing major, nothing impacting to the point where it gets the attention of non-believers. But... Um, Ever since this whole thing with uh, Real Vida, uh, Pando app, reaching the incarcerated, uh, I realize now that the revival has officially begun in the prisons. Why is that important? Because those of you that come from the street knows that what happens in prison eventually spreads out here. That's just the way it is in our neighborhoods. That's the way it's always been. You know, uh, when the prison gangs started in the 60s and 70s, and those people eventually started to get out in the 80s, um, whatever was politics inside of prison uh, spread out all the way to the streets, to the neighborhoods, to the barrios out here in California, and I'm sure in other parts of the United States. In the same way. God will not be outdone. He says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So seeing this um, uh, Lil Cuete get baptized, uh, whether it's him or more or others, I'm telling you, brace yourself because this is just the beginning. What God is starting in prison is going to spread because God is going to raise up leaders that are not afraid, leaders that are not cowards, leaders that are not bold. And um, what's the best place to find those that are bold and strong and not afraid? It's in the streets and in the prisons. And um, and this is what God is going to do, you know. And and you're going to see much more of this. Um, If he, by chance, happens to watch this video... Uh, like I said, I don't know him, never heard of him. Uh, when I I Googled, oh, I YouTubed, and, and I noticed a lot of his very popular songs were released, what, 14 years ago, you know, or so. Um, that was around the time I was released. So uh, I think his popularity, popularity was probably during the time I was incarcerated, which is why I don't know who he is. And then when I got out, I was already saved, and I was already focused on pastor in a church and 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 uh, planting a church so during the years of his popularity and and i'm sure he's still popular i I don't know i have no idea but i do want to say this to you if you're watching is that you continue and the main thing is do this is you need to find somebody that's going to disciple you 
In the same way, uh, I'm going to put it to you, in, and for anybody else listening in street terms, is that anytime I would meet a young homeboy back when I was living in the world and, um, and he knew how things ran, I'd be like, man, who schooled you? You know, because I've met, I've met um, homeboys in the neighborhoods with there was no OG schooling them and they were making really dumb decisions and you can tell that they were not street smart. And then you would go to certain cities and you would come across even the youngsters were very schooled. It was because the OGs in our neighborhood were teaching them the right and the wrongs and a lot of them weren't getting caught up with some dumb stuff and then later on if they were doing dumb things on the streets they'd end up having to pay for it when they did get incarcerated so in that same way we need to know who's schooling us because when we come to the lord we're essentially babies all over again and there's nothing wrong with that but the thing is this is that when 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 you see like a little tree in a park and that they just planted a tree they always have a stick right next to next to it and that stick is tied to the tree why is that so the tree will grow straight in the same way when a new believer especially somebody coming from the music industry or coming from the neighborhood um, when we don't have somebody to stand next to us um, What's going to happen is we're going to grow up crooked, and I don't want that for you. I want you to be truly discipled in the things of the Lord. It doesn't matter some of the, the things that people are saying. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you, you cling to the Lord, and you cling to those who are going to help you um, grow in the things of God. So, uh, But other than that, I wanted to talk about this. Is another thing that happened was... Um, you know, we had uh, Real Vida TV here with us over the weekend. Uh, Jeremy and Eve, Sister Eve, and man, they are an amazing couple. Very humble, uh, very knowledgeable in the Word. They love the Lord. And it would, truly was a treat to be with them. But something happened, you know, and uh, when we were uh, sightseeing, and, and it was awesome what happened. I, I take it as a prophetic word. Uh, let me explain. So we were in San Francisco, and there's this old fort, a military fort, right under the Golden Gate Bridge on the San Francisco side. And a lot of people don't know it's there, or they don't even know how to get there, but it's right underneath the bridge, literally. Like, you're, if you're in the fort, you look up, you see the bottom of the Golden Gate Bridge. And uh, that fort was built in the 1800s, uh, and... It was during the Civil War. Now, you might think, like, wait, the Civil War didn't happen in California. You're right, it didn't. It happened in the North and South on, on the East Coast. That's when they were fighting for slavery and one of the Confederates, again, you know. So, um, but at the same time, that's when the gold rush was happening. And that was here in Northern California. That's why, like, the San Francisco 49ers, the 49ers is, were miners that were looking for gold. You know, and um, so uh, the gold rush was happening in literally the foothills uh, right here, like just outside of Modesto. When you go towards Sonora, there was a town um, named uh, Col uh, uh, Columbia, not the Columbia, the country, but Columbia, the, the state park. There's a little western town that's still intact to this day. Matter of fact, I used to love taking my kids there. Uh, they could still pan for gold, and there's like these little western shops, and it's all the original town. But anyways, all of that gold uh, that was being found in those hills during the gold rush, remember people from all over the world rushed into San Francisco Bay, and then they'd make their way toward these foothills here. That's how San Francisco became such a big city so fast. That is how Stockton became, a, and Sacramento became a city fast, because when you go into the Bay Area, there's, there's, it's like it broke off into these huge rivers. One of them was the Sacramento River, and then there was a break off that went into, which is the San Joaquin River, which goes into Stockton. So downtown Stockton, that's there's a huge river there that if you follow it, you'll end up in the Bay Area. So anyways, a lot of supplies were brought in from San Francisco, and they were taken down the rivers. And then people that were out here um, searching for gold would travel to Sacramento or Stockton to these little port towns, and they would buy supplies and food and whatnot, and they would bring their gold. So anyways, the gold 
was held in a mint in San Francisco. I mean, we're talking rooms and rooms and rooms of gold bars. And uh, because of that, the Confederate Army knew that there was, if they could get a hold of that gold, they could probably win the war because they would be able to fund the entire civil war. Well, there was no way for that for them to get access to that gold, but nevertheless, uh, the right here in the United States in San Francisco, they built that fort because they were afraid that somebody would come by ship and try to steal the gold. So you have this fort. And um, the, you can see the holes there where they had the uh, for cannons, and uh, it was pretty cool. It, it was a free museum. Anyways, I'm saying I went longer explanation than I wanted to. But anyways, um, at the end of the day, uh, at 4:30, they were about to close, and uh, so we started to walk out. Me and Sharon and Sister Eve and Jeremy. And as we were, we were walking out, one of the uh, rangers there, I don't know if he's a ranger, park ranger, uh, whoever it is, he was in a uniform. He says, can you guys help me fold the flag? Because we saw him bringing the flag down. That was pretty cool. This huge flag that flies above the fort, an American flag. And we saw him taking it down. And then anyways, as we're passing him, he goes, can you help me fold the flag? And we're like, yeah, of course. What an honor, right? So... As we were folding the flag, he was training us how to properly fold it. Fold it. So uh, Jeremy had one corner, I had the other one, and um, and he was teaching us how to fold it. And he was saying to not let it hit the ground, to pull it tight, and basically you made these folds where I'm folding toward Jeremy, and then Jeremy's folding toward me, and I'm folding toward Jeremy, and Jeremy's folding toward me as it gets smaller and smaller. and. Um, and the Lord said, this is a prophetic word. That this fort is here to guard the gold. And the gold is under lock and key. And he says, I have more treasures than the gold that are held lock and key, which are the inmates, the leaders, the future generals that are going to lead the revival. And, um, and there were so many things that this represented the fact that that me and Jeremy were together. Because I, I asked them a few times. I'm like, I love that you guys came. I love that you're here. But why are you here? And that was a question that kind of lingered. You know, and um, I believe this. Is that even though God has given them a beautiful ministry already. That they don't need us. They're doing amazing on their own. But nevertheless, it was because of them that opened up the doors and gave me more information on how to get on Pando and Edovo. And, um, and not only that, but they have been looking for people to labor with too because you can't do it all alone. And they shared their heart and we shared our heart with them. And it was just prophetic that Jeremy and myself were both holding the flag, folding the flag, keeping it from falling on the ground. That in a place that represented the very fort that protected the gold under lock and key. You know, there's no way that the weight of America can be on, on, on Jeremy and me and Sister Eve and Sharon. But I think that in our space of influence, it is our job to hold up this nation and not let it hit the ground. In the same way we couldn't let the flag hit the ground. In the same way that we were folding it together is the same way that as leaders, as spiritual leaders, as Holy Spirit-filled leaders, we need to fold it together. Not one ministry can do it alone. And as we were folding it, we had to hold it tight so it would be folded right. So in the same way, we need to disciple the right way and not do things loosely. And as we fold and come together, I was doing my part and it was heading toward his direction. And then he would do his part and head toward my direction. 
all of that, I took it as a prophetic word. And I don't, I'm not the type to take every little thing. As I don't not like, oh, look at that cloud. That's a prophetic. Look at the way the wind's blowing. That's prophetic. Look at the way my burrito's steaming. That's prophetic. No, I don't, I don't, I'm not that type of person. So when I say that it was a prophetic moment, I mean, it was truly a prophetic moment, you know, and, um, not only the future is going to show what it is that God's about to unleash, but God is a strategic God, and there's no way the biggest prison podcast in the nation came to hang out with Sharon and I. And for us to to be blind to that, like, oh, yeah, they did all that just to come hang out with us and, and you know, have, have some clam chowder with us is, is silly to think that that's the only reason why they came. And maybe they don't have the full answer, but they just been, they were just led by God and obeyed God in coming. You know, and we were able to embrace them. And it's just the start of something beautiful. And I'm excited of what God is going to do and what God is doing. You know, but I just wanted to share that with you guys today. So three things. I wanted to let you know that there will be now shorter devotionals. Um, I wanted to talk about Lil Cuete. And also I wanted to share with you this, what I believe is prophetic and what God is doing um, and only the future can can uh, unleash the truth of what really happened this weekend as uh, Jeremy and Sister Eve were here with us. Um, I just trust God. Sharon just trusts God. Jeremy and Eve just trust God. You know, and the fact that they were willing to come all the way over here just because the Lord said go. I love that. You know, and we need more believers like that, that are going to not ask God why and just do. So anyways, guys, with that, God bless you. Thank you so much. And uh, you'll be seeing me more often. Like I said, it's okay if it's, uh, I'd rather give you 15 and 20 minutes than nothing at all. So uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. And uh, see you tomorrow.